Well, good afternoon, y'all, and welcome to Apron Strings. I know a lot of my regular viewers will watch this, but I'll have some new ones because of the pie collaboration. My collaboration is with Leanne at the Mennonite Farmhouse and Tony at Kettle Kitchen. That's who has uh, collaborated this pie uh, for the month of March. So I'm on the very last day, which happens to be Easter Sunday. So I'm making pies to take to our Easter feast. Um, normally, I cook a big Easter dinner at my house, and we have pies and cakes and all the trimmings. But we're going to serve lunch after church Sunday. And so I'm making a couple of pecan pies to take with me to the church. Now, when I was a new bride, I tried to make a pecan pie, and it was a disaster. It was like the crust rose up to the top. And that was my husband's favorite pie, and I was going to impress him. Well, I didn't. So I asked his mother, you know, what to do to make the pie right. Well, I was beating the far out of my eggs with my mixer, and she said, okay, just barely whisk those eggs, and then add your uh, Cairo and the rest of your ingredients. And she said, now just stir in your pecan. She said, if you whip it too much, somehow it makes it separate or something. I don't know what the science behind it is, but if you have trouble with your pecan pies, just barely whisk those eggs until they're kind of blended. Not till they're smooth and all, you know, I'll show you here in a minute. But the next pecan pie I made was perfect, and I've been making perfect pecan pies ever since. So I'm going to bring y'all over to my butcher block, which is where I generally mix everything up. And we're going to make a couple of pecan pies. and. Um, I'll show y'all how it's done, how I've been doing it for 54 years, and I'm going to take them to church tomorrow for the Easter meal. So let me get the camera moved where y'all can see what I'm doing, and we'll get this show on the road. First thing you have to do is get your pie crust ready. So I actually am using Pillsbury pie crust that come in the box, rolled up two to the box, and I've rolled it out a little bigger than it was, and my pan is still a little bit big, so I'm not going to have a whole lot of crust at the top to make it pretty. But uh, I'm going to crimp the edges a little bit. And when you're making a pecan pie, or a pie that you bake in the oven in a raw crust, you do not prick the bottom of your crust or your, your goodie will run out. Now when grandmother told me how she made her pies, she bought Miss Smith's pie crust. And she would swear by Miss Smith's pie crust. So if you, you don't want to mess with making a pie crust, buy you a deep dish pie crust, Pet Ritz or the Miss Smiths, and you'll have it. But when you, make, when you put it in here, take your finger and go around and make sure you've got it up. There's not a corner, but it's kind of like poking it in the corner. Get your pie in there. I mean, you're, get all the air out. And now we're ready to take it over to the butcher block and get our filling going. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, crack three eggs in my bowl here. And these are eggs that my hens laid for me. And the yolks are pretty dark. And I like that. I was having trouble telling which eggs was the oldest and which was which, so I got to where I get me a pencil and I write the date, because there's half four hens left. I write the date on them that I got them out of the um, hen house, and that way I can keep up with how old they are. So see, I'm just going to whisk these, not until they're totally lemony looking, just enough to say I've whisked them. That's it, and you can still see they're just kind of mixed. It's not a great big smooth bunch of pretty lemon colored yellow there. So we've got that. We need to add a half of a cup of granulated sugar. One teaspoon of vanilla. And my friend Susan sent this to me and she orders these bottles because the lid is exactly one teaspoon. I like that. I like convenience. and one cup of light corn syrup. You know, kind of like you call cold drinks Cokes, I always say Cairo, but it's just light corn syrup. And whisk that around. Okay, your Cairo's kind of mixed up good with your eggs. 
Now there's two things you can do when it comes time to put your pecans. You can add a cup of chopped pecans, which is what I prefer to do, or you can pour your uh, filling into the pie crust and then place pecan halves around on the top. But we always like the pecans in it like this, so that's what I'm going to do today. Then I'm going to need just a pinch of salt. Now, grandmother's recipe called for more salt, but I don't like it real salty. So I'm just putting a pinch. Let me get my one of my pie crusts over here. And I really could have like done one and a half because my pie crust is bigger. Couldn't find my little Pyrex pans that are the smaller ones. But I don't think anybody will turn it down because it's not running over the edges. So there's one ready to go in the oven. And let me mix up one more. And we'll have this ready to go. They have to cook 50 minutes. And these eggs are fresh, and I know they're good, or I would be breaking them in another dish before I broke them in all on top of each other like this. I had eight hens, but we had a, in my backyard spent, so I didn't worry about dogs or anything getting in. You know, I protect them at night from coons and all, but the other day, a dog got in, and, um, before I could get out there, he had killed six of my hens, and it was sport. They didn't eat them, they didn't mutilate them, they just killed them and ran and chased another one. But I'm getting four eggs a day, so that's more than I use. Mix my k row in. When I was a kid, ever Easter, uh-oh, we went to Grandma's house, and oh my goodness, big old Easter egg hunts. But I'm not a kid anymore, and I am the Grandma. And I don't have as many grandkids as my grandmother had, and mine are grown. So there won't be any Easter egg dying or Easter egg huntings at my house. Put the vanilla in. Let me get my pinch of salt. For you people that are new, I have a ton of good recipes on this channel. I hope you'll go back and look at some of the older ones. Just a country cook. I don't do fancy stuff. Casseroles and goodies. Sometimes I garden and sometimes play the piano. I really wanted to play Because He Lives today, but I don't think I'm going to get it done. I'm going to get them in the oven for 50 minutes at 325, and then I'll bring y'all back and show you what they look like. I was going to show y'all the pies are out of the oven, and they're uh, perfect. I'm going to put them over here and show them to you again in a minute and talk to you about them. I'm not going to cut them because I'm taking them to the church dinner tomorrow, and I don't want to take them already cut and a piece out of it. But uh, when you make it like this, your pie comes out. In the crust, no runny, it, it's perfect. Okay, y'all, I sure hope that you'll try this recipe. It's worked for me. In fact, it's never failed. And I've had so many people that have used the recipe and said for the first time their pecan pie turned out perfectly. So, 
y'all give it a try. Comment down below. Let me know that you tried it and it worked for you. If you have any questions, I uh, try to answer every comment. I do not like to watch someone's YouTube video and I take time to comment and I don't matter enough for them to answer. I don't watch them anymore. So, if you watch my videos and if you comment, I will answer you if you have questions. My email address is always down underneath. You can email me or you can ask in a comment and I'll try to give you an answer if I have an answer. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. I hope you have had a wonderful Easter morning. Uh, this video should come out about 1 o'clock on Easter Sunday and then you can make it next week or whatever because it's going to be too late for Easter, but we're fixing to face April. Mother's Day's coming. You're going to need some good recipes for dessert on Mother's Day. So try it then if you don't try it before. I'm so thankful that I know Easter is not about the bunny. It's about the lamb that was slain for our sins. I'm so thankful that he chose me to know about him. Because the Bible says no man comes to the Father except the Spirit draw him. So I'm thankful that he liked me good enough or loved me enough or found something in me that, that he liked, that he drew me to where I could know him and receive salvation. Y'all have a blessed week, and I will see you again shortly with another video.